Om Shanti. Ganesha sister, you can start the movie. Om Shanti. Om Shanti, can you hear me? Yes. Om Shanti, good morning to all of you. Good evening from here and good morning from there. Back in India, it's the morning time, right? And it's evening time here. Yeah. So today we will be listening to this beautiful Murli from Baba of 1970. And even before I start the Murli, I really appreciate all of you for making this intense efforts to read the Vyakta Murli, to listen to the Vyakta Murli every single day. It is amazing how you all are making this intense effort. And I'm sure Baba must be very pleased with all of you for making this effort. And I would like to thank Sister Rakhi for uh, uh, inviting me to read the Murli today. And I was going through this Murli. Uh, in this Murli, Baba is mainly talking about surrender. Baba is explaining the meaning of surrender. Surrender doesn't mean that you leave everything and you just go and start living at the center, yeah? But Baba is explaining that the true meaning of surrender is to surrender your thoughts, surrender your time, your every second, surrender your every action, every deed, and surrender your relationship, your wealth. And so Baba is very beautifully explaining the deep meaning of this world, surrender. And we have such a beautiful role model, Brahma Baba in front of us, who really showed us, who really demonstrated us the true meaning of surrender. So let's listen to this beautiful Murli from Baba. And I will share the screen. So this Murli was spoken on 29th of June, 1970. The title of this Murli is The Unlimited Form of Surrender. So Baba is, Baba is asking, do all of you know your four images? Do all of you know your four images? images. Today, Bab Dada is seeing the four images of each one of this present time of the conference age, not of the future time. What are those four images? So Baba is asking what are the four images of each one of this present time of the conference age, not of the future time? Do you know your own images? So some replied, some of them who were sitting in front of Baba, they gave maybe some answers. So then Baba said, the things that you all said have you become such images or are you becoming those? When will you become those? Or do you think that you will go fast at the last moment? However, will you be able to go fast at the last moment? The more you make yourself an image of success over a long period of time, to that extent, you will claim a right to a complete kingdom over a long period of time. 
you know baba always emphasizes on this word long period of time whatever practices baba has asked us to practice all the drills baba says that you have to practice them over a long period of time so baba says because you know at the end you will not get time to practice any of them if we keep practicing then at the end you know it will become natural for us to leave the body especially the practice of bodiless stage you know baba keeps telling us to practice because that is what is going to help us at the end so baba is emphasizing on this word long period of time baba says na bahut kal in hindi baba says bahut kal long period of time baba says for instance if someone is not an embodiment of success over a long period of time then according to that he will claim the right to a kingdom for a short time he does not receive it for the full time so baba is relating you know the success that we experience right now with the success that we are going to experience in the future if we become an embodiment of success here for a long period of time then when we go to the golden age there also we will experience the same for a long period of time yeah that means we will enjoy enjoy ruling the world for a long period of time yeah so baba says only those who are engaged in making effort to become perfect over a long period of time claim the right to a kingdom for the full time what are the four images baba is seen yeah in the path of devotion you know brahma baba is shown with four faces yeah on four sides four faces so baba is telling us you know, baba baba always says that whatever you do and whatever you learn whatever you practice at the time of the conference age that is what people do on the path of devotion so the four images that baba is talking about today that's what we practice and that's what they worship on the path of devotion yeah so what are the four images baba is seeing baba says this is also an aim for becoming complete so firstly baba is seeing the image of knowledge yeah the image of knowledge that's the first one secondly the image of virtues that's the second image thirdly the image of being a donor and fourthly the image of complete success yeah so these are the four images we can visualize ourselves four faces of all of us image of knowledge image of virtue virtues image of being a donor and then when we do all of this that means when we become an embodiment of knowledge we become an embodiment of virtue we become an embodiment of donor then automatically the fourth image what will be that the image of complete success right so beautiful images baba is showing to us baba says you were told that to do service means to be a great donor so service means to donate to be a great donor so bab dada is seeing the four images of each one 
the image of four faces is remembered. You have to give everyone the vision of four images in the one image. So four in one. Baba is saying four images in the one image. Baba says if even one image is missing here, there will accordingly be a weakness there. So we have to be very cautious. We have to have all the four images, not even one missing, Baba says. You know, just like Baba tells us that you have to pass, pass with honors in all the four subjects, knowledge, jnan, yoga, service, and dharna, right? The four subjects we have to pass with honors. So similarly, Baba is saying that you have to have all these four images in one image. And even if, if even one image is missing, then there will accordingly be a weakness there. Then Baba is giving example, just as you book in the luggage that you take with you when traveling and you receive it at the other end. Yeah, you give all your luggage and then you know, at your destination, you get whatever luggage uh, you loaded that's what you get there at the destination. So Baba says, similarly, this too is a booking, a booking office. To the extent that you book whatever you want now, so you will accordingly attain it there. Yeah, you will attain whatever you book. That's what you're going to get there. So think whether you have become all four images. Have you become those with four images? Baba is asking. The more you imbibe all of these aspects of your image here, so accordingly, you will receive a future kingdom. And your non-living images that are to be created in the copper age will be created according to your images of the confluence age. Do you understand? So now what aim will you keep in front of you in order to become a complete image? Yeah, we have to keep the aim, aim of perfection. Baba says, you tell those on the path of devotion to come and understand what effort the deities made that they became as they are portrayed in the images. So what aim will you keep in front of you in order to become perfect image. What aim did they keep? In the corporeal form, there is just the one aim of perfection. What aim did Baba keep in order to become Karmatit? Right? Baba always kept this aim of becoming an angel. Right? Brahma Baba. In the beginning, Brahma Baba also did not know that his perfect form is that of an angel. You know, when Dadi Gulzar, she went, she went, one time she went in trance and she came back from trance and she said, you know, that that Baba that is up there that I saw looks exactly like you. But you know what? That image is very bright, very pure, and it is sparkling like anything. 
but you don't sparkle like that. And she was so innocent, you know, so innocently she said to Brahma Baba after she came back from trance. So then Brahma Baba understood that, yes, definitely there is my perfect form up there. So then Brahma Baba intensified his efforts. He realized that his perfect form is very bright and very pure and he has, he has to make effort in becoming that form. So he made intense efforts. And then after six months, again, he sent Gulzar Dadi and he asked her to go and again, uh, see how now Brahma Baba looks. So she went again in trance and again, she came back and she said that, you know, it's now also that form is still is more bright as compared to this form. So he again intensified his efforts. You know, so little by little, you know, this is how Brahma Baba, he made intense efforts to become perfect. So he compared his image with that image. So just like that, it's not just only one Brahma Baba, his perfect image was there, but it's the story is about us also. Each one of us, we all have our perfect form up there in the, in the subtle region. And we all have to intensify our efforts. We all have to keep the same that I have to become just like Brahma Baba became an angel. I also have to become that. Yeah, so Baba is saying, you know, asking what aim did Baba keep in order to become Karmatit? In which aspects did he become perfect? Do you know how much he adopted an unlimited vision of the world, perfect. Perfect is just one word, but he imbibed it to such an unlimited extent that he became as he is. Yeah, so he really, really imbibed that word, perfect to such an unlimited extent that he became as he is. By having the aim of total surrender, he became perfect. Yeah, so what was his aim? His aim was complete surrender, total surrender. So he surrendered everything right from the beginning. He did not even wait for even one second, you know, the moment he realized that I have to become cooperative in bringing that beautiful world of heaven on this world, on this earth, planet earth, then he, he did not even you know, go back to where he was doing his business. He asked his partner to send whatever share he had from his business he asked him to send that money and he completely surrendered his wealth, whatever wealth he got, his wealth, his mind, his body, complete surrender. Not wasted. He did not even waste one second. So that's what Baba is telling us, complete surrender, total surrender. That, that was his aim. And with that aim, he became perfect. So Baba says, so he became perfect to the extent that he surrendered. However, what is the unlimited form of surrender? So Baba is asking, what is the unlimited form of surrender? The more you imbibe this, in an unlimited way, to that extent, you will make your intellect unlimited and become one with a right to the world. Yeah. So unlimited surrender, it means we have to make our intellect unlimited. Yeah. Baba says there are four aspects in that too. So today in this Murli Baba is telling us 
four four things now four aspects to this world unlimited surrender so firstly firstly your every thought should be surrendered yeah every thought should be surrendered that's the first thing secondly every second should be surrendered every second should be surrendered then baba says that is your time should be surrendered thirdly your actions should be surrendered yeah fourthly your relationships and wealth should also be surrendered so four things thoughts time actions and relationships and wealth so four things so four things baba is emphasizing on that we have to check so as we are listening to this murli we should also check you know to what extent we have surrendered ourselves to what extent we have surrendered every thought of ours every second of ours every action of ours and every relationship and wealth we have surrendered to baba so baba says there also has to be the surrender of all relationships laukic relations are of course included in that anyway however so baba is now taking us into the deeper understanding of this word relationship that the relationship between the body and the soul should also be surrendered yeah relationship between the body and the soul should also be surrendered have you surrendered to this extent perishable wealth is not a big thing but imperishable wealth the attainment of happiness peace purity love and bliss as a birth right was surrendered in the service of other souls this is a very deep point baba is making so we have to we have to surrender not only perishable wealth baba says that is not a big thing but imperishable wealth that means the attainment of happiness peace purity love bliss that is our birth right that we that also we have to surrender in the service of other souls so baba says he felt that peace for himself lay in the peace of the children yeah brahma baba that was uh, that was his attitude peace for children that that would come first as compared to what he would experience baba says so in giving peace to other souls he considered it to be peace for him this is what it means to surrender your worldly wealth together with your godly wealth while staying in the stage of a detached observer yeah so there is such a vast unlimited significance in the world surrender do you understand yeah so deep meaning of this word surrender those who imbibe to such an unlimited extent become images of success and images of perfection so do not see the world surrender with the ordinary meaning yeah 
It is easy to surrender worldly things. Baba is saying. But to surrender godly attainments means to be a great donor. And to have pure thoughts for others happens number wise according to one's capacity and worthiness. Those who surrender everything to this extent are said to be those who are totally surrendered. Yeah. So total surrender Baba is explaining to us. Not only worldly wealth, but also godly wealth. That means, you know, if someone is looking for peace, someone is looking for love, someone is looking for happiness, then we have to give them, we have to give the souls what they are looking for. Even if we are, we have some other things to take care of, but still we, we see that this soul needs this thing, maybe knowledge or peace or love at this particular moment, then we need to let go of whatever, whatever we wanted to do at that moment. So let go of what we want and take care of the other souls, what they are looking for. So that is where Baba is saying that is complete surrender, total surrender. Really, you are taking care of the souls, right? Dadi Prakashmani always used to say that, you know, whatever the soul needs, that's what you need, you should give to that soul. If the soul is looking for, for knowledge, share knowledge with the soul. At that moment, you know, you have to, you have to share knowledge points because Baba has given us so many knowledge points, right? So share, tell them about the knowledge. But if the soul is coming to you and soul does not want to listen to anything, soul just wants to just experience peace. So at that time, you sit with the soul and just give the experience of peace to that soul at that time. So that the soul is contented. Yeah, and that's what we all have to do. We all are Baba's helpers. We all are here to serve. And true service, true service is, this is what true service is. Whatever souls need, we have to give them. Yeah, and true service comes only when we have this attitude of total surrender. Yeah, that's what Baba is explaining to us, the meaning of total surrender. Yeah, so Baba says, have you become such images of perfection, such images of surrender? Yeah, so we have to check this. Baba says, all consciousness of I should be totally merged. Yeah, so nothing is mine. Everything belongs to Baba. Baba says, in, even in today's Murli, Baba said that if you are saying this word I, you should always put that I, the incorporeal soul, right? Not I, this body, but I, the incorporeal soul. So then that way, all your body consciousness will be merged, right? Baba says, when something is merged in something else, it becomes the same. When Baba says to merge means to become the same. So the more you merge the consciousness of I, the more you will become an image of equality. Baba is saying, yeah? The more you merge the consciousness of I, the more you will become an image of equality. That means we become equal to Baba. When you serve innumerable souls, what is the aim you keep? Now Baba is asking, when you're serving so many souls, what is the aim you keep? So someone said, to make them similar to ourselves. So what Baba is saying? 
You do not just have to make others equal to yourselves, but equal to the Father. Now Baba is explaining the reason why. If you make them equal to yourselves, the weaknesses you have will also become their weaknesses. Therefore, if you wish to become perfect, you must not make others just equal to yourselves, but equal to the Father. Yeah? Just as Baba makes you more elevated than himself. In the same way, if you make others more elevated than yourselves, it means you have followed the Father. So you must not just make others equal to yourselves, but equal to the Father. So this should be the aim. Baba is saying that if you are serving so many souls, innumerable souls, you should always keep the same. Yeah, of making them equal to Baba. Right? Then Baba says, if you have just kept the aim of making others equal to yourselves, they will have many weaknesses remaining because the aim you kept was just to that extent. Yeah? <clears throat> yeah, so Baba says, this is why you must always keep the aim of perfection. You have to keep the aim of the perfect image that has been revealed. You cannot keep an aim of that which is still incognito, which is still not revealed. As your aim, so your objective. Therefore, if you keep an elevated aim, you will have elevated attainment, right? So whatever aim we keep, that's what, if we keep the aim that this is what we have to become, then we can plan accordingly, right? That's why, you know, Baba always says that keep, keep this aim of becoming like Lakshmi and Narayan. So if you keep that aim in front of you, always keep the picture of Lakshmi and Narayan in front of you, then you will, you will always keep checking, you know, your behavior, the way you interact, the way you speak, the way you, uh, the way you connect with others, you know, you will always, you will pay attention to that. So aim, keeping the aim is very important. So Baba has, in this murli, Baba has given us this aim of our four images, you know, beautiful four images that we should always keep in front of us so that we are very attentive. So Baba says, if you keep an elevated aim, you will have an elevated attainment. Now your third eye should always be focused on the target in a very stable way. So we should be focused. That third eye should be focused on that target, that image that Baba has shown us in this murli. Baba says when people have a stage where they are totally lost in love, their eyes become very still. Baba is giving the example. When they are in love, then their eyes are completely still. In the same way, this third eye, the eye of the divine intellect should be stable and constant. Yeah? Divine eye should be stable and constant. To be stable means to be focused on one. Their stage should be visible as being lost in love. Yeah, so we have to become an image of stability. Baba, many times Baba has given this example of Angad, right? Your stability should be like Angad how Angad, when he went to that court where 
you know, as a peace messenger in Ravan's court, you know, he planted his foot and he asked people over there, you know, who were sitting to move his leg, you know, and he said, he challenged everyone that whoever would be able to move my foot, you know, if you are able to move my foot, then I will, I will, I will be defeated. Rama will be defeated and Sita will be yours. Yeah, that's what he said in the court because he had that faith, you know, he had firm faith in one Rama. So he knew that no one is going to move his foot. So that was the image of stability. He was so stable. He was so firm. Yeah, so that's what Baba says that you also have to become like Angad, as stable, as focused. He was focused on one Rama. So many people came and, you know, in that court, in Ravan's court, they were so strong, but none of them were able to move his foot. Even Ravan came and Ravan bowed down at his feet. He was also not able to do anything. So that's what Baba says, that if you keep one Baba in your mind, have one faith, one ek bal ek bharosa, yeah? one faith, one Baba with you, then you will always be successful. So be stable means, to be stable means to be focused on one Baba. Then Baba says their state should be visible as being lost in love. How will others have a vision of the third eye? Through the forehead, a sparkle on the forehead and intoxication in the eyes will be visible. Yeah, so this is the sign. Through this, you will be able to tell whether someone's third eye is lost in love or whether he is on a battlefield. When your eyes are not well, now Baba is again explaining, giving an example. When your eyes are not well, the eyelids constantly blink. Yeah. So similarly, Baba says, if that third eye is functioning accurately, that is, if the divine intellect is clean in an accurate way, it will be stable. What happens when dust gets in your eyes? The eyelids start to blink. The sign of dust is fluctuation. And the sign of perfect health is stability. The sign of perfect health is stability. In the same way, this third eye should always remain stable. Yeah? Third eye should always remain stable. You know, Baba always says, connect your intellect with me. Always mm, connect your intellect with me alone. So what does that mean? The third eye should always be stable. That's, that's the meaning of that. Baba says people will have visions from your forehead and your eyes. And so check, does my third eye open and close very quickly or does it remain constantly open? When people are lost in remembrance of someone, their eyes become still. In the same way, only those who are lost in remembrance of one will be able to stabilize themselves in the stage of perfection. Otherwise, like the eyes, the third eye will continue to open and shut, open and shut. It will not be able to remain still. If there is some dust, quickly remove it. So we need to check. Um, maya comes in the form of dust, right? Many times Baba says, and then you are not able to see anything. It completely clouds your intellect. Yeah? And then your connection with Baba is lost. Yeah? So we have to keep ourselves safe from the dust of Maya. Yeah, Baba says, quickly remove it. Don't allow it to enter in your eyes, in your intellect in your head 
Baba says, Baba will tell you an amusing situation. So now Baba is again giving another example. For instance, if people are having a vision of you and your image keeps fluctuating, what vision would they have? When someone's photo is about to be taken, the photographer asks him to stop moving. If he moves, the photograph would be spoiled. Yeah, so we have to be, we have to stand still, right? If you keep moving, then the picture will not come right. So Baba says, in the same way, what vision would others have if your stage keeps fluctuating? Yeah, so that is about the outer image. Baba is talking about the outer picture, outer photograph. Similarly, our inner picture, our inner image, what is going on in my mind, what is going on in my intellect. Yeah, so if there is fluctuation there, that means if my mind and my intellect is going in so many different directions, not connecting to one Baba alone, it keeps fluctuating. That means I'm moving inside, there is movement happening. And then that will not allow my perfect image to be visible in front of the devotees. That's what Baba is saying. That in the same way, what vision would others have if your stage keeps fluctuating, just as you make yourself very stable at the time of being photographed, in the same way, always think that your devotees are having a vision of you at every moment. Yeah? So this is such a beautiful point to remember. <clears throat> so Baba is saying, yeah, that you should always pay attention that you are on a stage. Yeah, many times Baba says, see, feel as if, see as if you are on a stage and everyone is looking at you. You are a hero actor. Yeah, everyone's attention is on you, what you are doing. And then if you have this awareness, then automatically what will happen? You will be very attentive. You will be very particular about every, your every action, your every behavior, yeah, your every interaction. You will, you will be very conscious, right? You have to be very, very attentive. That's what Baba says. So here also Baba is saying, that always think that your devotees are having a vision of you at every moment. Yeah. And that's why Baba says always keep smiling. Devotees does not want to see an upset face. You're upset face, right? <laughs> You're upset. They will have the vision of that. And they will all, they will also become even more upset. They are as such upset and they want our vision, our help. And if they, if they look at our face, they will even become, become more upset. Yeah, so that's why Baba says, always be cheerful. Yeah, and in order to be cheerful, Baba has told us the method. Always sit on the chair. Yeah, which chair? On this chair of self-respect. Yeah, who am I? If we remember who am I? then we will always be cheerful, right? And according to this Murli, Baba has given us the image, all the four images in one. That is who I am. So always keep that image in front of you. So Baba says, then always think that your devotees are having a vision of you at every moment, then you will become an image that grants visions that is an image of stability. Otherwise, devotees will not have a clear vision in order to grant a clear vision, a stable intellect and a constant stage are essential. Two things important to note down. Two things that are important to grant a clear vision. Baba says a stable intellect and a constant stage. Baba says, devotees will have visions of each of you at this time. The souls of those devotees will be filled with the seed that is with those sanskars. 
then those sanskars will be merged and will then emerge in the copper age. Uh, this is a very deep point Baba is making here. Whatever they take from us right now, that's what will be emerged in the copper age. Baba says, just as you explain that the founders of religion take a message and some scars from here, which then emerge from them later in the same way, your subjects and your devotees will carry their sanskars and they will then emerge accordingly. If the devotees are not shown a clear image, how can you fill them with those sanskars? You also have to carry out this task. You must not just create subjects, but together with that, you also have to fill the devotees with those sanskaras. So this is our responsibility, Baba is telling us, not just creating subjects, but you have to fill sanskaras, good sanskaras in them. How many subjects you have created and how many have become devotees will also be known. The rosaries of devotees and subjects will both be revealed. Each of you will have a vision of both your rosaries. You will have a vision of yourself as to where you are threaded in the rosary. Yeah, at the end, paper will be out. We will all know where we are, where we stand. Yeah, so Baba says the significance of some having more subjects and some having more devotees is still incognito. In the same way, some have less prosperity, even though they have a big kingdom, whereas others have a smaller kingdom, but greater prosperity. Yeah, so this is a very important understanding Baba is giving to us. It is up to us how much prosperous we want to be in the golden age. Yeah. Baba says, this is also an incognito secret which will be revealed at some point. At present, Baba says, at present, keep the aim of creating subjects. Yeah. Devotees will be created like a motor a minute at the last moment, that means very quickly. Yeah, the creation of devotees will be very quick. They will just get the message at the end. You know, everyone is going to get the message. Yeah, so Baba says, but you should always keep the aim of creating subjects. Yeah, Baba says, the devotees will pray to you here at this time. They will not worship you. They will sing your praise and they will then worship you there. You will know all this later. Acha Om Shanti. So beautiful Murli from Baba. Very enriching Murli. Baba has given us this Murli is dated so this Murli is dated 29th of June, 1970. And the title is The Unlimited Form of Surrender. Yeah. So Baba is, Baba has explained to us so beautifully the true meaning of the word surrender. And Baba has told us about our images. We have to always remember the four images, the image of knowledge, the image of virtues, yeah, the image of donor, the image of success, the four images, four in one, yeah, so always remember this. Okay, so yes, Rakhi Ben, now what next? We will take a few moments of silence, sister, and then um, brothers and sisters can share the churning points of the Murli. Okay, sure. Okay, so let's sit in silence for a few minutes.
we may unmute ourselves and share the churning points of the Murli. Om Shanti. Om Shanti Gupta. Om Shanti. Uh, good morning, everyone. Very beautiful, more Murli, and uh, 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 each and every point is to be noted. Uh, and uh, I like the word which Baba has mentioned, uh, which my Baba has mentioned, that this perfect is just one word, but you need to imbibe to such an extent that it will need to become total surrender. Perfect. And uh, we become perfect only when we have all these four images, that is the image of knowledge, image of virtues, image of being a donor, and image of complete success. Only then we can be perfect. And I also like the example which Baba has given for surrenderance. You give all your lug luggage and receive all your luggage at the desti destination. Beautiful, thank you. Om Shanti, sister. It's yes, it's a very beautiful surrender. Baba speaks about so many kinds of surrender, high surrender, deep surrender. Today he speaks about total surrender. To surrender my thoughts, the consciousness, the see, the second actions and of course relationships. And that consciousness of I, which is important, my and my body. Aim is to become equal to the father, not just Apsaman, but Bab Saman. For this, he Baba tells us, be on a stage, be stable, that is focused on one. Then what will be the result? All will see me in the form of light. And in the end, Baba's last paragraph, Baba says, what will devotees see in you? Devotees, will. it will be so fast, they'll be just touched, they become such kind of transformation would take place in total surrender. Om Shanti. Om Shanti, sister. Very beautiful, Mundi. Thank you, Baba, for that. Thank you, Divine Family. This, um, I really like that line which says that when Baba is talking about full surrender, complete surrender, Surrendering material items is actually easy. Surrendering God's attainments and actually having that genuine donor, you know, aspect of giving good feelings, good vibrations to everybody is actually more challenging. And actually that really made me think because it is a fact that even for your enemy having so-called enemy, worldly enemy, but having the purest of thoughts, giving it back to everyone is one of the most divine things which Baba is uh, showing us the way. Om Shanti. Om Shanti, sister. Baba says you should keep your aim, the aim of perfection, as your aim, so your object. We should keep uh, Lakshmi Narayan photo to uh, make ourselves to become like that. We have to check whether our actions that we deal with others is elevated. When elevated aim is there, we will have elevated, elevated attainment. Thank you, sister. Om Shanti. Uh, thank you, Baba. And thank you, Divine Family. This is a wonderful movie today. And uh, I like the four aspects uh, that we have to surrender uh, every second, every action, every thought, every relationship. So that four aspects we have to surrender in every second, our thoughts, it's uh, our knowledge given to Baba, given by Baba, and the virtues. And that in every second and every moment, our vibrations should be like uh, Baba, 
and according to our vibration our devotees are like that so we have to this is a checkpoint that uh, we have surrendered or not that uh, we have to mistake checkpoint of that om shanti thank you sister om shanti thank you sister for such a beautiful very very deep murli about surrender and how broad the surrender form is how deep it is uh, i especially this point uh, that whatever we fix an aim the object or the attainments are also according to the aim which we fix baba has given some checking points how to be sure that we have kept a very elevated aim that the third eye should always be stable that our aim should be that the the the, the checking point is that the forehead should be having a light and the eyes will have the intoxication i mean it's a points of experiencing and once we experience this then we can be for sure that our purusharth is on the right track and uh, in case there is some instability that means there is some kind of waste thoughts which are there which we need to basically eliminate and again ensure that our third eye is always stable ectic so they constantly that point is uh, very good i mean i'll try implementing that and uh, once that imagine that some photographer is taking a photograph that means the stage should always be stable then only some baba is looking at me and that sakshatkar that vision the bhakt atma and praja atma they will take this sanskar from here in the seat form that's also is very powerful and last point that rajdhani badi hote bhi sampatti kam hoti that means we have to see the quality of the praja that matters rather than the quantity that is also deep secret om shanti sister in the interest of time uh, we can move on to meditation for a few minutes sure so will you be playing a song or something or what would you like to do so we can do a two minutes commentary based meditation sure okay so so let's see ourselves as an image of perfection four in one image let's bring this four in one image in front of us image of knowledge image of virtues image of a great donor an image of a complete embodiment of success and as you are stabilized in this image you are connected to one baba and souls are getting 
beautiful vision from this image. Baba is being revealed through your image. Om Shanti. Thank you, Kanista Pen, for accepting our invitation for reading the Murli. It was a really deep, meaningful Murli. Thank you, Divine Soul, for joining us and do the churning of the Murli. And see you tomorrow by 5 a.m. Till that time, have a wonderful day. Om Shanti. Thank you, everyone, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to read the Murli and to be with this beautiful Divine Family. Thank you. Mom, oh, thank you.